Hi, in this video I'll be unboxing and reviewing the LG 27UL500 4K monitor. In the box you'll get two cables, there's your DisplayPort cable and your HDMI cable. There is an installation CD and here is your monitor stand which I'll demonstrate shortly. There's the shaft part which is going to fit like that and I'll show you how to build that up. A little cover, the power supply plus your country specific plug. And lastly, just two screws to complete your monitor stand assembly. Right, so this is the monitor itself. Right, so your connectivity is as follows. You've got a display port input. You've got HDMI 1, HDMI 2, which means you can feed your monitor from your PC and possibly from your AV recorder if you've got one. You've got your DC jack here and then you've got your headphone output over here. This over here is where you're going to connect your monitor stand. And over here you've got your Kensington type lock over there. And what's hidden over here is actually a toggle switch, which I will show to you shortly. Right, just having a look at the specific model, 27UL500. There is a 550, the 550 comes with an adjustable stand. This one is the 500, the stand is not adjustable. You can see the power 19 volts at 2 amps and interestingly this was manufactured in February 2021 and it was made in South Africa. One of the reasons why it was made in the country that it is sold is it's cheaper for import duties because a lot of countries impose import duties on certain electronics. So if you can manufacture your electronics in that country you don't have to be subjected to those high import duties. It has a visa mount over here. This is 10 centimeter, 10 centimeter, so you can mount this on a wall or on a stand. Right over here, you've got your menu knob and selector. You can see that it's a toggle knob, so it can go up, down, left, right, and inwards. Right, just having a look at the thickness of the bezel, exactly 10 millimeters on the top, 10 millimeters on the sides, and on the bottom, 20 millimeters. Right, you may notice that the profile is not very thick. This is quite a thin monitor, but keeping in mind that the monitor stand is going to protrude backwards over there. The thickness of this monitor is less than 45 millimeters. Right, to set up your monitor stand, you just put that on like that. There are two screws which you then need to screw in over here. These are star screws. You then just put this cover on here, you depress it until you hear a click. At the bottom of the stand you'll see a fastening screw with a handle and all you need to do is seat that inside there and twist this until it is tight. At the bottom of the stand you will see a rubber foot there and one on each side. You can adjust the viewing angle of your monitor when it's placed on your desk by just adjusting the stand up or down. Right, there's the LG monitor on the table. Unfortunately, it does not swivel, so you can't twist it left or right. If you want to, you'll have to move the entire monitor itself. And I've just placed it next to two other monitors, which happen to be Dell. Right, so over here I have the Dell P-Series, and what I've put it here is just to show you the bezel. Actually very similar. The only difference is the Dell has the menu buttons on the side, while the LG has it in the middle at the bottom under the branding. So the LG menu button is sitting over there. Right over here I have the Dell S series. This has a very small bezel, but you can see that this is a gloss monitor. So the LG is a matte monitor. Just if I take my phone, you can see the difference in the way it reflects. The one is diffused and the one is like a mirror. Even though I have very bright lights in this lab, you can see that this one is not showing any of the reflection. Right, so this is the 27UL500 on the counter over here with its native stand and next to it you can see I've got some other monitors that happen to be dull and I will now show you how to mount the monitor using the visa spacing. So over here you can see that I've got a bracket which is from an arm and you can see there's a little problem here. These screws have to be much longer than usual because the space for the visa mounting you can see is actually recessed. And this is true of a lot of the dull monitors. So you can see that I actually needed much longer screws to deal with that recess. And the reason for this has got to do with the Dell's monitor stand. So over here, you can see how the stand works. It actually slots in there, but at the same time, there are the screws for a visa mounting. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap this monitor for the LG. And you'll see how the LG fits with this type of bracket. You'll see that it is nice and snug. 
Right, so in this case, I'm going to be doing a visa mount, so I don't need the stand. But as you can see, I can't pull this off. This thing is now stuck. So this is how you remove it. You take your fingers like this and you widen it so that this can pop off. Now I can just unscrew those two screws and then put this as a visa mounted monitor. And the good news is these two screws can be used over here as well. Right, so there's the monitor now mounted. You can see it's got this white backing. Very nice, looks uh, smart. And I'm using the display port connector and there is the power cord. And obviously if you do want to use the 3.5 millimeter audio output, there it is. The monitor does not have built-in speakers. So even though you did see the vents at the bottom of the monitor, they are not speaker ports. Right, so here you can see I've got the LG 4K and then I've got the other LG, so there's two of the same monitors on the far right. That is also a 4K monitor, that happens to be the Dell 20, uh, P2715Q and that happens to be made by LG as well, although much earlier. So that is an older 4K monitor and then on the top left this is a P range Dell monitor. So these are all professional range monitors and I normally use about five monitors on my desk and these are all being driven by the Radeon Pro 7130 graphics card. I'm just going to show you some of the images from this monitor. I understand this is a crude test but nevertheless this is a Fujifilm X-T3 that recorded the images. I'm using it at an ISO of 250. It's on exposure lock. The room is not very bright. All I did is a search for 4K portraits. Right, the picture settings that you choose make significant impacts to the image. And then there's also a gamma adjustment. Right, now I'm going to show you the monitor, go through the menus and show you some of the features. Right, so here is the monitor. Now what you'll notice is there's no LED on the front of the monitor. For example, there's no button here and there's no status LED telling me the monitor's on. However, there is an LED underneath. If you have a look there, you can see where that toggle knob is. There's actually an LED inside there. You can switch that LED on or off. Now, one of the benefits of that is if this monitor is in a bedroom and your video signal is still present, but the monitor's gone to sleep, for example, that LED will not bother you if, say, you're downloading something overnight and the computer's still on, but the monitor screen is gone black, that LED won't bother you. However, if you're in an office where there's good lighting, you cannot see this LED. And that for me is a problem because you do not know if the monitor's on or off. Now, why that's a problem? Well, if you've got multiple monitors or if you're somebody who moves around, you plug in your laptop, especially if you're using a dock, sometimes you need to know if the monitor's on because often there's connectivity issues. So if I show you my monitor next door here, on the corner here, there's a little button. Inside that button is a dim LED. Dim enough not to bother you, bright enough to show you that the monitor is functional and in the on position. For me, this is very important. Right, so you can toggle this knob to the left, to the right, back, forward. So first thing I'm going to do is toggle it to the left. To the left, to the right, you can see you've got your volume. If you want to mute it, you're just pressing it down. The volume is for the 3.5 millimeter audio output that would be for your headphones. I suppose you could use it as a line output. Now, if I toggle it to the right, volume. If I toggle it to the left, volume, right? So if I leave it now, it'll disappear. Now, if I toggle it back, it's immediately telling you what port you are using. And there it says the display port. If I toggle it to the front, it's also telling you the display port. To get into the menu, you need to press it upwards or inwards. Right, so there you go. You get your menu option here. If I go to input, it'll bring up the menu option for the input. You can see you've got HDMI 1, 2 and display port. Now there's something peculiar about this and I'm going to quickly describe it. As you can see, I've got it connected via DisplayPort. If I disconnect the DisplayPort and connect it via HDMI 2, it won't automatically go to that input. It'll first ask you if you want it to go to that input. So over here, I've got a monitor. I'm unplugging it now. It's using the DisplayPort and now I'm going to plug it in via the HDMI. 
Right, so I've now plugged it in via HDMI, and you can see that it doesn't just go to the HDMI input, it actually asks you if you want to go to that input. And now you can see it actually disappeared and it said, no signal, please check your connection. But underneath it says HDMI input is connected. So if you plugged in and were busy at the back of the monitor and that notice went away and you came back and you looked at this, you might not have read that it actually is connected. You literally have to press here to activate that new input so you may connect your monitor and you may think it's not working but you manually must go and accept the change of the input so here you can see it's even gone to sleep right so having a look at the menu i'm going to go to the settings now on the top right here you're going to get your brightness contrast volume now you can see i've put mine to 55 uh, interestingly, when I got the monitor, it was at its maximum of 100 brightness. Now, it's not as bright as I thought it would be. For example, my Dell monitor next door is actually a little bit brighter, and I thought the LG would be brighter as well. But I'm not saying that the monitor isn't bright enough. The monitor is decent. So then you've got your contrast, you've got your volume, and then you've got your color temperature, which you can set manually. So you've got your warm, medium, cool, manual over there. And I think that manual option is very important for a lot of people. Right, now we come to picture. Now picture mode, this is very nice. You've got lots of options here. You've got the vivid, the HDR effect, you've got reader, so that's calmer on your eyes, dimmer, cinema for watching movies, uh, FPS and RTS. This would be your high performance settings for faster frames per second. That would be for your gamers. And then you've got color weakness. This is for people who are having a problem differentiating certain colors. And you can see that it accentuates certain colors to show the difference between those colors which are difficult to differentiate if you have that color weakness. And then you've got your broadcast standards over there. Right, what you'll notice is if you set it to vivid and then you wanna to come to a picture adjust, you can't adjust the other settings there. You can't adjust the contrast, the sharpness, the super resolution, black level, because it's already set based on that vivid setting. So if I go back to picture, and I go to picture mode, when you set these, it blocks you from changing the settings in the manual mode. So I'm going to custom. Now I can go to picture adjust and you can see I've got their contrast, sharpness, and then I've got super resolution. What that's for is it's just a setting that if you want to see high definition videos, I think it's supposed to be more crisp, then you'll have it on high. Middle, low, low is more for photography or pictures that are not, or images that are not moving so fast, or you can just have it off. Now, then you've got something called black level adjust, which is grayed out here. And the reason why it's grayed out is it's only available if you're using HDMI. On the black level, you'll be able to set it to high or low. If it's on high, it keeps the current contrast ratio. If it's on low, it lowers the black levels, but it also raises the white levels. Right, then you've got the DFC. Now that is a dynamic brightness adjustment. So this adjusts the brightness automatically. I normally have those things off. Then you've got game adjust. So you can have your response time. You can set it to fast, faster, normal, or off. So in my case, I'm putting mine on normal. I'm not a gamer, so I'll just leave it on normal. Free sync, this is an AMD setting. And what it does is it lets the monitor match the game's sync rate. So basically the frames per second. This only works if you enable it on your AMD settings. So if I come to AMD, now here's my menu for AMD. If I go to the display, it says AMD Free Sync. It's not supported, but if I go to the other monitor, um, you can see that it's actually enabled there. It says enabled. So it's only because I've enabled it on the menu of the monitor from this LG menu. And then you've got Black Stabilizer. What that does is say you're playing a game that has a lot of dark scenes and you wanna still see what's going on. So if you increase it, it helps you distinguish objects on a dark screen. So it's actually increasing the gray level or the brightness of the grays in the picture. And if you decrease it, well, it's doing the opposite. And then you've got color adjustment. Now over here, you can see I've got the gamma. It's got preset mode one, two, three. 
Right, then you come to color temperature. Now over here it's on custom, but if you set it to warm, for example, it grays out these. You can no longer manually adjust the red, green, and the blue. So if I go and put this back to custom, then you can see you can manually adjust the red, green, and blue. And also you can set it to your manual setting, your own color temperature, giving you a much wider range of setting. As you can see, and then I've got my sixth color. There you can see you've got red hue, red saturation, green hue, green saturation. And this gives you finer control of your color. And that's very useful because it allows you to calibrate the screen at the screen. Now, something that I want to say about color is it's a very personal thing. And it also takes many weeks to get used to your monitor by trial and error, looking at different photos. And everybody's got a certain calibration standard in their mind. So the question is, does this monitor have good color reproduction? For me, it's less about answering whether the color is good and more about answering whether the range of color control is good. And the reason being is that color is such a personal thing. So does the monitor provide the exact same color as other monitors that I have? No, because the monitors are unique. Even though I have a Dell monitor, which is, happens to be also made by LG, color reproduction is actually different and quite significantly different. However, by having the fine color control, that allows you to match the monitors quite closely. So to answer the question if the color reproduction is good, look, the monitor is a decent monitor, and that's where I leave it. I have had monitors that were older monitors, and they had a very cool appearance. Even if you try to make them more on the warmer side, you still had a bit of an icy look on the monitor. And even when you tried to warm the monitor, you would still see this greeny blue coming through on some of the images. So what I like about this is that you've got fine control of the color. Right, moving on. The language, self-explanatory, energy saving, I leave that off. The power LED, well, that's the LED underneath here, which I've already explained. Now, the automatic standby. Right now, this is something that caught me a bit. I had it to eight hours. And what I thought would happen was that when the laptop switched on the next day, it would re-wake up the monitor. But actually, having this on automatic standby switches the monitor off. So if you want to have the monitor come back on, you need to manually switch it on. And what happened is I came in the morning and I thought my computer was on and I was pressing the keyboard and tapping on the mouse and nothing was happening. And then I realized that I actually had to manually come and switch on the monitor. So for me, I leave this off and I let my laptop put the monitors to sleep. The automatic standby means it's actually gonna shut off the monitor and uh, even if there's a video signal there, it won't rewake the monitor. Right, the display port version is 1.4. And then it says the HDMI deep color, that's uh, it's on, but remember that you uh, have to have HDMI connected to have that work. And then the buzzer, well, when you turn it on, it makes a little sound, and then you know the monitor's on. Now, something I like about this monitor, if you see, if I leave this for a bit, the menu disappears. When you go back to the menu, it takes you back to the same place. So if I press the menu button again, you can see if I go to settings, it should take me back to buzzer. There it goes to general. And when I go to the side, you can see it actually takes me to where I was last active. Now on screen display, and then it comes to information. This is important and I'm gonna tell you why it's important. You can see there it's giving the specification and note it says 60 hertz. And why I'm bringing that to your attention is, especially if you're using multiple monitors, you might find that you don't get that 60 hertz. So for example, here you can see I've got four monitors and if I go to advanced display settings, okay, there you can see display one LG, it says 10 bit at 60 hertz. So the monitor's at maximum. Now you might find that depending on the cables you use or the type of graphics card you've got, you might not get 10 bit and you might not get 60 hertz. So if I look at my other monitor, for example, there's my Dell P2715, it's only working at 30 hertz. And the reason for that is I've reached the maximum bandwidth of my graphics card. So unfortunately, this monitor could actually go to 60 hertz, but unfortunately, it's at 30. So you must check that, otherwise you might think that the monitor is not performing properly, but actually, you've had a limit on your system. And now if I go to another monitor, you can see there's my other LG 60 Hertz and there's 4K and there's the 10 bit. Now what I noticed is that depending on the type of cable I use, determine the bit depth. So if I use the HDMI cable, I was only getting an eight bit depth. And if I use the 
DisplayPort cable, I was getting the 10 bit. So just check that. And when I did use the monitor, you often get this error message. I'm quickly unplugging the monitor and I'm going to plug it back in. And it gives this message every time I plug in the monitor. It says, make sure you use the supplied input cables. Now, actually, I used their cables and it didn't make a difference. And I connected it directly just to the graphic card without any monitor connected. And it still gave me that error. I think this warning is here just as a disclaimer rather than telling you you're using the wrong cable. So you can tell it, do not display this message again. And that's probably the best thing you should do because it comes up no matter which cable I use. I've got very premium cables and it still comes up and you can see that the specification of the monitor is at maximum. So why it's reporting this error, I'm unsure. So I'm just going to say, do not display that message again. Right, just having a look at a monitor test. I'll run through it quickly. There are no dead pixels on the screen. Right, so I'm just going to go through a few of these specifications. This is my older 4K monitor, which is a Dell, but really an LG. And this is the newer LG, which I've got. And there's a few improvements, which I'll quickly cover. The first and most significant one is the efficiency of the monitor. You can see that my older Dell has a maximum power consumption of 95 watts, while my LG is 41 watts. Now, I did say the brightness on this LG is not as good as my older 4K monitor, but that does not account for a reduction of more than half the power. So that, I feel, is a significant improvement. You could run two monitors for the same power consumption as my older monitor. Now, the next thing is the weight. The weight of the monitor is lower. So you can see it's at 4.6 kilograms. That's very useful if you're mounting your monitor on an extendable arm. The lighter the monitor, the less pressure on the arm. I like the fact that the monitor comes with a visa spacing. In my opinion, any monitor that is running 4K should have DisplayPort. Now on the specification, it says 1.2, but when I showed you on the monitor, it said 1.4. That is probably because the monitor is brand new. It's just been made not even four weeks ago. So this specification might be out of date. What you will notice, my older monitor has much better connectivity because it's also got that hub and it has the ability to daisy chain display port so that you pay a bit more for and what that means is you can connect one display port to your monitor and then from that monitor you can connect to another monitor so you can run the monitors in a chain and that means that the monitor itself has a hub a display port hub but there are some limitations with that especially when you're using 4k it often halves the frame rate of the monitor then the UL500 has these additional features, the AMD FreeSync, the Flickr Free technology, and the low blue light. You would have to set your monitor to take advantage of those features. Looking at the screen brightness, you can see it's 300 candela, while my older Dell is 350, and that is noticeable. Looking at the refresh rate, you're getting a minimum response time of 5 milliseconds. Not much improvement here. One nice thing about the monitor is in the country that I reside in, the monitor comes with a two-year warranty. I initially was trying to purchase a Dell monitor and this is the Dell that I was going for, the S2721Q. But unfortunately, this monitor is having an international parts shortage and I have been unable to get that monitor for about three months now. Maybe in other countries it's freely available. 
but then the next Dell monitor in the range has a significant price increase and also it's running off USB-C. I do not require that. I'm happy to use the display port. The other monitor I was considering was the Asus VG289. Nice feature is it's 28 inch, but again, in my country, it was very expensive. In fact, it was almost twice the price as the LG. One last thing I like about the monitor is the light appearance from the back of the monitor. All right, thanks for watching and cheers.